Hello, my name is Josh Atkinson, and you have once again stumbled upon my portrait painting YouTube channel. All these portraits, I painted them. Um, and today I'm going to be painting a portrait of this flower, this rose. It's not a still life or a landscape. I don't know if it's a still life or a landscape, because it is outside, not on a table. Anyway, um, yeah, okay, so it's not a portrait. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you have a deep... Um, a flaw that you've never been able to like uh, handle and like conquer and then you do one day and and then it's on your YouTube channel so um, time-lapse time yeah so this is the source image and here is our time-lapse um, I saw on an Instagram account called at Paul Foxton p-a-u-l-f-o-x-t-o-n um, I'd seen other people do this this technique but it just sort of finally clicked for me to try it myself where basically you thin out a, an appropriate shadow tone of the rose um, and then you get a piece of fabric such as your old washed but very old um, underwear and you uh, scrape out the lit portions of the rose um, and it's very rough like you um, you end up correcting it um, a lot and so it doesn't have to be super precious and super precise but as precise as you can get it you know it does make the whole process easier um this time i tried to follow what paul foxton does he does it all a prima all in one sitting wet into wet um this is the second time i tried to paint this rose and it just doesn't work for me to do all all wet into wet i like i i've done some roses since this one that you'll see in the coming weeks but i um generally i just scrape them out now and then I let the thin paint dry for 10 hours or 24 hours or whatever. And then I just go in with the paint. So I failed with this rose. Um, well, I failed with many roses. Roses have always been my Achilles heel, one of them. Um, I think sometimes people get it into their head that if you can paint the human face accurately, then, you know, certainly landscapes and still lifes wouldn't be a challenge for you and it's just not true basically whatever you put the most time into you're going to be better at i think it's as simple as that and i i've avoided roses since i was 16. i tried to paint a purple rose uh, instead of doing my geometry homework and it was it just wasn't very good and they've continued to not be good ever since but then this one i finally just tried this technique of scraping out scraping light into dark and i'd avoided it because quite frankly i just didn't want to put my finger into that much paint thinner like honestly um but now i'm sort of addicted to this technique and i've tried it with some other things where it doesn't really make sense like it really it's useful when something has a lot of detail um like rose petals or i don't know maybe if you did like a rock quarry, like those John Singer Sargent rock quarries, like something like that. A lot of re re repetitive imagery, then then I think it's useful. But um, what was I saying? I was saying why I why this one kind of worked for me. It, it, it didn't work the first time because I tried to do what everyone tells you to do with painting. You know, paint not what you think the image is, but paint what you see. And I was seeing you know, all of these different colors. It's a, you know, supposedly it's a white rose, but of course there's all of this yellow toward the center and then the shadow of white is a purple, bluish kind of thing. And so I I got to the point of scraping out the light parts and then I tried to go in with all the colors and it just it just destroyed any potential for, for detail and for, it just got muddy, like the colors weren't separated. So that's why I've found that letting things dry a bit in between sittings is working better for me. I don't quite... It is a, a white rose. There are multicolored roses, but I think this one is truly just white. I think the yellow in the center is a product of the sunlight passing through the petals, but then also reflecting within the petals. So it kind of like... I think it just intensifies the color of the rose, because nothing's truly white if you're painting you have to decide is it white plus yellow white plus orange white plus blue whatever you know so 
So I tend to go with yellow on something like this, like a, a rose in organic form. But anyway, basically, like, they're, they're, the secret to, to painting a rose is that you have to do it slowly. Like, it is petal by petal. I don't even know how useful it is to to watch someone else do this. Like, like I said before, I watched many people do this, like, scraping out technique before, before I stumbled upon Paul Foxton on Instagram. But, like, I was ready to try it this time. And honestly, like, you get your fingernail and a little bit of paint thinner for, like, 10 minutes, and then you just go wash it off. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. But, um, but yeah, like, I'm, this, this has always been one of those things that I just couldn't do. It was always a point of, of weakness and failure and embarrassment, honestly, you know, um, because if you can paint portraits, people might think you can do anything, but roses and peonies dense foliage it's always been really tricky so this has been quite the um quite the quantum leap in my understanding of how to how to uh render this particular subject matter and i'm making it sound so conceptual but it really i mean it is like i just came to understand or, or rather to accept that i can't paint a, a rose with so much angularity, all the little petals, all the shapes and reflections and body shadows and cast shadows that it creates, I can't paint that the way that I can paint, you know, a, a, a well-lit human face. It's just, it's just segmented, you know, literally, and so, so yeah. So there's room for improvement in this painting, and, and I have improved since. I kind of went crazy um, once I painted this, I just kept painting uh, roses. But um, I will still be doing mostly portraits on the channel, at least. I don't know, if you are more interested in roses, please do leave a comment letting me know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's... I'm just so happy with this one. Like, I can't believe I managed to, like, get it to work after so long. So anyway, this is the final painting. It is oil on a 6x6 canvas panel. So then, yes, that is how we arrived at this painting of a white rose, my first, <laughs> my first successful painting of a rose in my entire life. Um, it just feels, it feels pretty amazing, if I'm honest. It's, uh, it's always been something that eluded me, and I was a little self-conscious about it. Um, and then, I don't know, at a certain point, you just kind of bite the bullet. It wasn't any big new concept, it was just accepting that a rose can't be painted like hair or skin. It's, It's got little seg segments and details, and it needs smaller brushes and, and things that I tend to avoid in my portrait painting. But, um, which there will certainly be more of that. Um, next week there will be another portrait, but this channel might be going into a sort of hybrid portrait florals thing. I don't know, whatever. This channel's like five months old. Um, thank you for the 64 subscribers. I'm touched, honestly. Um, but uh, I don't know how things will evolve going forward. But if you're enjoying it, please do subscribe and like and comment and all that. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you next Monday. So please do have a creative seven days until then. Thank you. Bye-bye.